I'm generally interested in explosive ability yeah. and being extremely powerful in my wrestling, right? Like I want to, I I'm trying to blow through somebody, right? So it's like, what exercises or what specifically would you have someone do or how would you have someone work on their power center so that way they can be more explosive and more powerful? So, you know, ultimately, I don't typically do this. I've only been working with Mike here for like a week, but we have had some awesome conversations and he's really into the same things that we do here with sports muscle technology and the physio gym. So I asked him if he would sit down and talk with us and, you know, you know share some conversations that maybe we've already had or ask me some, uh, you know, questions that he's still thinking about. And uh, ultimately, you know, every time that I leave one of our sessions, I feel so grateful that I'm getting to work with somebody that's an elite level athlete like he is that's so into this stuff. I feel more charged up and excited. And I just, I wish that I had more people to work with that was like him all the time. But unfortunately, really, it's few and far between. You know, I get lucky and I get some athletes like him in that actually inspire me as well, you know, with their passion and their interest in the things that we're doing here. So I just wanted to sit down and, and uh, talk with him. But I guess the first thing is if you want to introduce yourself, uh, yeah, who yeah. you are would be. Absolutely. Uh, what's up, everybody? So my name is Mike Machiavello. I'm a wrestler. I'm currently training to I'm an Olympic hopeful. So I finished fourth this year at uh, the 2021 U.S. Olympic trials. I was a U.S. national team member from 2019 to 2021. And then uh, I wrestled at NC State University in Raleigh, North Carolina in college. And I uh, was a D1 national champ in 2018 at 197 pounds. And I'm out here teaching and I've had the privilege to work with Lanil um, since I've been here and it's been awesome. I'm learning a lot and <clears throat> man, he knows what he's talking about. He's really, really good at what he does. And there's just, like he, he mentioned before, there's a passion, there's a commitment um, <clears throat> to just understanding um the human body right and its mechanics and the way that it moves and and how do you move just more efficiently and and how is that healthier for you in the long term and so that's obviously great for his clients but even better for athletes like myself who are now at this point in my career i'm just fascinated with trying to figure out how can i maximize every single thing that i'm doing whether it comes to recovery whether it comes to movement whether it comes to strength and conditioning and so it's been uh, it's been a privilege and I'm definitely really thankful for it. So I guess, you know, the one of the things that I wanted to talk about and touch on with you, yeah. which we talked about the other day, was basically as you get older and more seasoned, how important body mechanics become. Yeah. Because I think that's always my challenge. I end up working with a lot of high school athletes and they don't really have the base. Like we talked about functional patterns and some of these other, yeah. other systems. Yeah. And the reason for even you knowing those is because you start to realize that body mechanics are so important with, yeah. with everything, right? Yeah. And you know, I've had a lot of athletes in the past that were again high school athletes, they come back to me years later and they're like asking me all these questions and everything. And I always think, well, why didn't, didn't the high school kid when, when they were that version of themselves ask those questions? But I think it's because of this maturity and mastery process that we talked about the other day. So I was just yeah. curious if you wanted to touch on that. I'm not sure. I think when I was in high school, I wasn't thinking about any of this stuff. And I think it definitely goes back to like, the maturity and, and the master, I think, too, you just kind of start to think about things a little bit more. And I think when you're a high school athlete, there's just things that you can get away with a little bit more. You can get away with more errors and still win and compete um, at a high level when it comes to high school. And I feel like as you continue to progress, you get to college, all right, you have to make less errors and there's uh, your mistakes are exposed a little bit easy, more easily. And then you get to the, the level above that and it's even more so and so i think as you continue to progress and go from one level to another you realize how many errors you're actually making how many mistakes you actually make and and how how bad you need to fix them because if you don't then they're easily exposed and now you're not getting the result that you're working for so um yeah and so for me like when i was in high school i was probably all over the place making all types of mechanical errors but then also just like I was just trying to be really strong and in shape and athletic. And so like, it was really basic, like working hard and going for runs in the morning and doing jump ropes and 
taking a 45 pound plate around my head and just like, just, just, grinding. just random stuff, just right. no plan, no nothing. So and with that, I mean, that's the, that's the key. You, you can't move forward without that. Right. Right. You have to be able to grind, right. right? You have to be able to work hard, right. but eventually you got to work hard the right way though. Cause exactly. you can work hard and then going in the wrong direction. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Eventually it catches up with you if you're yeah. not doing the right stuff. Yeah. Right. And then especially if you have an injury, right. Yeah. And you don't take care of it, yeah. then you just end up perpetuating that injury into the future and you end up with more issues that go along with that too yeah so, so i think i guess my question for you would oh, be here we go this is he always has the best question <laughs> um like uh <clears throat> when it comes to just like mechanics so like for wrestling i feel like everything you do has to be purposeful right and as i get older i realize that more so it's like whether i come to a collar tie and the minute i'm putting my hands on my opponent do I know exactly what I'm doing? Am I setting them? Am I moving them? Am I, am I like, how am I looking to get to my offense? And so, um, but also as I, as I realized the, the, as I become more familiar with the little nuances of just like the technical aspect, right? If I collar tie and I'm a little too far on my toes and I'm leaning forward, if a guy backs up and snaps my hand, it's a lot easier for me, for him to get my hands to the mat. But if my center of gravity is underneath me and I'm well balanced, and I reach, and I'm not overextending myself, and he snaps my hand. I'm not, my hands aren't touching the bat. I can drop my hand, and I continue to, to take space and take ground. So I guess just like efficiency, right, in the way that you move, and then just balance, right? Like how important do you think that is just in general, like for someone's physical health and when you're not moving efficiently and, and not understanding like body mechanics, do you think that makes you more susceptible for injury? or yeah 100 percent. so you know ultimately like we've been talking yeah. about there's this position of power right that you have and i think one of the misnomers that everybody thinks is that power is all about creating force right yeah. but really it's your ability to absorb for force first kind of like the loading and unloading thing you were talking exactly about. the unloading and, uh, and loading thing right so just like we talked about plyometrics right there's this phase of loading and unloading well if your body's not in the right position your body can't absorb the force right so at minimum you're inefficient yeah right at the maximum you get hurt right so all it takes is to be in the wrong position during that loading phase and the connective tissue whatever it is, your ligaments, your like tendons. Like the ACL injury example you were talking about. Like the about. ACL injury, right, exactly. Right. So now when I go to put my base of stability right. down, right, just my foot, if my center of gravity is a, too far away from that foot, I have no power, right? I have no ability to absorb the force. I have no ability to change direction. So that's why we keep talking about every time that he's doing an exercise, we keep saying, I want you to be in a position where you feel like you can jump. Right. Because I know that that means that you're in a loaded position where you can absorb force yeah. and create force in, efficiently. Right. Yeah. Now, the challenge is and this is funny because we were just talking about this on the other video is when you add an opponent or you add these variables to the situation yeah. that now you have to be reactive and still get into the correct position to load and unload correctly. Yeah. That makes me think of the Boaster ball example. Right. Right, where we, I, I had asked you, you know, what do you think about the Bosu ball? And, you know, it's good for balance, but it, there are no external variables that are really challenging you. So, like, realistically, when you put me in a competitive setting, I'm not going to just be staying in one spot, right? Right. right. I'm going to be moving. There's going to be people, like, especially in the wrestling match, guys trying to pull me, push me, attack. And so there's just, just a lot of external factors so yeah. the, and the cool part about that and i think yeah. this is another reason why the bosu only has a limited ability or creating a, a instability underneath of the foot yeah. because what we actually see in that loading and unloading pattern is that the trunk is out of position right just like you were saying if you yeah. re if you reach too far it's not about what's underneath of your feet it's the fact that your trunk got too far away from your base of support so now you're out of position right and the cool part in wrestling is that's exactly what we do to somebody in wrestling i wrestled too right so i was an all-american in college just another reason why this has been been so cool is that we know that if i want to put you in a position of weakness i lengthen your body yep. out extend, right yeah. extend you out and I take you out of the power position because you don't have an ability to move or change direction. 
And you lose strength too. When you're overextended, yeah. Right, you have no power, right? So ultimately, especially when you think about pinning somebody, right? I'm trying to use my pressure to put them into a position where they can't move, right? If you're trying to fight against somebody else's strength, it's very inefficient, right? So I want to create an angle where it puts them in this extended position where now I'm in the power position, right? right? And I can load into their weak position, right? Yeah, so that's that, right. then that becomes the constant battle of what you're doing, right? Yeah. But sometimes you don't realize what you're doing with the way that you're placing your body mechanics right. that you're actually putting yourself into a position of weakness, yeah. right? So we, we talked about the other day, one of the big things that we see in functional training is that people like to add weights to them, kettlebells and all this other stuff, which if you think about what that weight's going to do, it's going to load your body in one way, but it's also so easy to make you off balance, yeah. right? So now instead of reacting to your body mechanics, you're reacting to this weight that's pulling you out of the power position or out of this correct loading position. So you have to be very careful with how much resistance and weight that you use when you're doing performance training and especially plyometrics type of act. Yeah. I really enjoyed like uh, the work you kind of had me do with uh, the bounce disc and the wobbler. I think that stuff's been good. Yeah, what do you think about the wobbler? I like it, man. Um, <clears throat> just because I think it forces me to really, you know, like we talked about loading and unloading. I think the karaoke drill that you have me do on it is kind of where I feel like I realize it the most where I lean very heavy to one side when I start trying to do the karaoke drill and then I'm falling off of it. So kind of realizing that I need to keep my center of gravity here. And as I'm going over, not leaning too far one way or the other, and then I'm able to stay on it. Right. But it's just, it, it gives immediate, immediate feedback on like where my center of gravity is and forces me to really be conscious of where my, my base is at. So that's so cool because we just spent all this time talking about that on, the, on this other video because it gives you the ability to self-correct. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I have this awesome dynamic situation with this elite athlete where I can take him and put him on this piece of equipment and he can figure it out himself. Yeah. Right. Without relying upon me. Right. It almost comes back to this idea of what we were talking about with performance enhancing drugs. Right. I don't want you to have to rely on some external thing for you to get performance. Right. Especially PEDs. Right. (laughs) Right. Right. You know, but a lot of times that's what happens with your training is that you're so reliant upon somebody coaching you through these movements. Right. That it never has a real functional transfer. And functional is what you want. Right. That's what I'm this is what you're striving for. Something that I can apply. Right. Right. Exactly. And we know a lot of the times what you're doing really doesn't have that much application to your sport. I think particularly in wrestling. Yeah. Right. You do all this weightlifting and all of these things and you get strong. And the next thing you know, you go out and wrestle and you're tired. Like it's like that strength just doesn't transfer. Yeah. Finding something that directly like applies. Right. Yeah. And rolls over. Yeah. It's been good, man. I've been enjoying it. I think I I like uh, the balance discs aspect too. the figure eights, I think having to shift my weight and it goes back to what you were talking about with the loading and the unloading that stuff's been interesting too and i I notice uh for me right like i'm talking about for me specifically i can't speak where everybody else has been working with lanil but for me specifically like even when i'm wrestling i'm more conscious about where my center of gravity is just in my stance so if i'm moving and i'm and i'm taking ground and i'm trying to cover distance right like just where my hips are at and where the top half of my body is really matters. And so it's like, it's kind of helping me kind of be more aware of that too, which has been helping my wrestling also. And again, you know, this is, we've been working together for a week, right? And he already started noticing this on the second session. That's what he came back in and said to me. He was like, oh man, I noticed when I was in my stance that I wasn't putting my foot where I needed to. And it was because of this stuff that we did. That's how potent this stuff is that we do. And ultimately, you know, the attention to detail that we're trying to transfer to you, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? So you can end up taking that and walking away from it in one yeah. in one or two sessions and yeah. start already applying it what, to what you're doing in your sport. I think a lot of it goes back to what you're saying though. It's like, Self-correcting, right? Like I'm having to figure it out myself on the equipment, right? On the wobbler or whether it is the balance discs. And I'm having to really, obviously you can see where the imbalance might be 
in, in where I'm unloading, but you can tell me, but if I don't feel it myself and make the correction, I'm still going to be making the same mistake. I still have to feel it myself. And so like, it just makes me, like I said, more conscious of it. So when I'm wrestling, I'm just more aware of it. And so I can feel, I can feel right. the difference. Right. So or when I'm off balance a little bit. Exactly. So think about if I added 200 pounds on your back, right? Kind of like what we do with the weighted vest. Or yeah, you just think, about, about like, think about heavier. Let's think ma maximum okay, weight. Like a lifting. whole body. Right. Think about how hard it is to pay attention to your body mechanics when yeah. you have like a maximum weight on you. Or when I'm fatigued. Or when you're fatigued. Yeah, or yeah. when you're going too yeah, fast, yeah. right? Yeah, so we yeah. covered that. So it would be the same thing. Like I'm not going to put a 100-pound weight vest on you during wrestling because it just slows you down and it makes yeah. it hard for you to be a, paying attention to your body mechanics because all you're paying attention to is that weight load. Yeah right? That weight is such a heavy sensory input to your body. It's the only thing that you can pay attention to, but that's also why it has a really potent effect. And that's also why psychologically you're like, Ooh, I feel this heavy weight. But at the same time now, just like when you have pain, you can't be very aware of your biomechanics, right? Because that pain, for example, if you have pain in your knee, it's sending such a heightened message to your brain of here I am, here I am, here I am. Well, how does it feel when you lift the heaviest weight that you can feel? It's kind of painful, yeah. right? And you're like, oh my gosh, this is so heavy, right? So not that weightlifting is the worst thing on earth. There's a benefit to it, which the other part is. I uh, like lifting. Yeah, like sure. And, and so, but this is the part. Body, no. Sure. And this is the part that people never think about, which we talked yeah. about. All weightlifting exercises are balance exercises. That's another one of these aha moments, right? When you go to pick up a barbell for the first time, right? You remember when you're in like eighth grade or whatever, and you're yeah. like, Woo! right? Yeah, yeah. That's a balancing exercise, right? When you go to squat with a barbell on your back, you have to balance it first and do the correct movement or your mechanics are going to be so inefficient that you can't do it. You know what this makes me think of? That's right. It makes me think of like almost how almost all movement kind of stems from your trunk. Oh, yeah. A little bit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, when you think about how important your trunk and your core is in wrestling, right? You can right. be really strong in your yeah. arms and legs, right? Yeah. But we, we talk about it being your sports core yeah. or your power center, right? If you don't power have center, that yeah. connection, yeah. right, of your arms and your legs, now you can't apply the force, right? The force becomes very sloppy and inefficient. So that's, that's, a, that's a great point. So if, if this is one of, the, you, you call this your power center, right? Like how, how do you develop this? in a way that accentuates someone's athleticism, right? Makes them even more athletic or makes them move more efficiently or makes them just more powerful. Because I'm generally interested in explosive ability yeah. and being extremely powerful in my wrestling, right? Like I want to, I want to, I'm trying to blow through somebody, right? So it's like how, what exercises or what specifically would you have someone do or how would you have someone work on their power center so that way they could be more explosive and more powerful? Yeah, and I, I think this is where a lot of the inefficiencies come in training because the thought process is, well, maybe how do I isolate that area? Yeah, that's right. But we know that you don't want those muscles to be isolated during athletic movements, right? You want them to be coordinated right? And synergistic. So it comes back to what we said. And this is why I love having these conversations with you because it's actually pretty repetitive, right? Yeah. It's how your trunk muscles are controlling your trunk when you go into the loading pattern and come out of it, right? So that's what we want to train. And that's why when we get on the wobbler, right, your core has to work to keep you in the right position where it automatically shows you that you're out of position, right? Yeah. Then as that happens, you self-correct without ever even thinking about what's going on with your core, yeah. which in wrestling, you can't think, hold on, is my core contracting right now? Right? Or are my abs firing? Or the funnier one is the uh, multifidi, which are these little what muscles in your back. Right? Yeah, exactly. Which you hear in all this physical therapy. Right, right, right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Right. But people will tell you, oh, that's where you're supposed to feel this. It's like, what, what? No, not, not in, not in athletic <laughs> movement. Right? That's P what you're PT to... nerds. Oh, right. Yeah, exactly. 
So us PT nerds like to get into the, into that type of stuff. But you don't want this overexpression of any of your core muscles, right? You want them working in synergy with your arms and your legs, which Mike actually uh, got a chance to uh, start looking into my book, Hacking the Athletic Code, The Sports Muscle Secrets. And we've been talking about this a little bit. There's a section in there that I call ambikinetic that we were talking about in some of the videos before. And that's what you want. You want this unification of your limbs, all four limbs and your trunk working in a coordinated manner. Primarily, you come back to the ACL tears. It's not so much where the leg is, it's where the trunk is relative to the leg, right? So if my core muscles and my lower extremity and my upper extremities aren't working correctly, it's gonna create torque in an area that's gonna potentially create an injury, right? At minimum, it creates inefficiency. Because at maximum, at maximum, you're going to see damage. Yeah, right. Wow. Whether it's repetitive damage over time, a small part, right, or something that's large and traumatic, where you see an ACL tear, for example. So, would you say that you have to work from like movement and balance from the ground? Like, you need to start with okay, how well balanced or strong is your ankle? Right, and then up to the knee, and then up to the hip, and then start from the ground up, or does it really matter? Or yeah, it does, right? So if you have any weakness in terms of this is where it starts, right? This is where uh, when you load, the first place that starts to bear weight is your foot and your ankle, correct or no? Sure. Or, right. or yeah. how does that work? Yeah, hundred yeah. percent, right? So, and then that's one of the reasons why your feet are ticklish right, is because they have a lot of sensory nerves in your feet. So when you put your foot down, whether you're paying attention to it or not, yeah. your brain knows exactly where your foot placement is. But then the next part is, if my foot's on the ground, if that's the contact point of the base of stability, it could be my hands too, right? It could be my shoulders, whatever parts on the ground, right? Where is the rest of your body relative to that, right? And then the question is, can you load and unload? right? Can you move? And this is where you come back to other modalities outside of uh, weightlifting, right? Because if I add too much weight on your body, you can't move well. If I add too much resistance, you can't move well. Right. Well, the other part is like in stretching, for example. I was just about to start asking about mobility. Yeah, right. So in mobility yeah. or in yoga, for example, a lot of the movements are taking you and putting you into a position of weakness, right? So you're in now a position where you can't move. You're in a position where you're in this long lever position in this extended weak position. We have no strength. Where you have no power. Ex exactly. Right. So how do you build strength through someone's complete range of motion? You want it to be connected to the entire body, right? So in a long lever range of motion position, I want to be able to control it with my body, right? Not just with the extremity, gotcha. right? That comes back to, we were talking about this earlier, a limping pattern, for example, is where the body tries to do the movement with only one limb, right? That one limb becomes- You're not it. Right. And that one limb becomes more important than the entire body, right? So yeah. because you're having that pain, that sensory awareness, your body starts to go, oh, we got to protect this. Same thing when you lift too much weight, right? Same thing when you're in this extended position. Right. And if you constantly do that over and over and over again, damage happens somewhere. Right? Yeah. And that's the, the question is, is where is it going to that be? Where it goes where now you have certain muscles overcompensating because you're not using this one. Right. And then so, the overcompensation now overworks muscles that aren't used to being worked this often, which yeah. now leads to more damage. So now as you go into your yeah. training, yeah. right, those muscles are still doing those same compensations. Right. And now you're getting more and more inefficient and you don't even realize that it's happening. And then yeah. you start doing cupping and all these other massage therapy techniques and float tanks and all of these things because you can't recover because you've never fixed your compensations, right? And it all starts with what we've been talking about too. We all know, and especially in wrestling, I want to lead with this leg, yeah. right? Because this is my dominant leg, yeah. right? So you end up developing this imbalance, right? This side dominance where one side is way stronger or way more really coordinated than the other side. Right. So as you go to start training the other side of the body, as you get up the levels, you got to be really careful. We, we spent a bunch of time the other night talking about switching from a right sided stance to a left sided stance and where the problems come with that. Primarily, what you're going to see is people's center of gravity is not going to be in the same position when they switch their stance. Which, yeah. which again, doesn't allow you to load and unload in and out of those patterns. Where you want to, right. yeah. 
So a lot of times you're thinking like we talked about from the beginning, I got to work hard. I got to work hard. I got to work hard. Okay. Now I'm working smart. You think that you're working smart, but you're not really aware of what your body mechanics are doing because you don't have that feedback that's telling you, Hey, Ooh, I'm out of this position a little bit too far. Yeah. Right. Sometimes I think video analysis is one of the best ways that you can see it. Kind of what we did the other day. Yep. But you're still not seeing it in your or feeling it. Right. And that's really what it comes down to. Right. Yeah. The coach will be like, Come on, you know, you're not doing this right. You're not doing this right. And you're like, no, I am doing it right. And then you see it and you're like, oh, geez, <laughs> this doesn't look good at all. Right. You know, you know what I'm saying yeah. there? Right. Yeah. So. Any other thoughts, questions on anything? No, that's all I can think of right now. So, yeah. So thanks so much for watching and listening. And I'm again, I'm so lucky to have Mike Machiavello here, elite level wrestler, athlete. We've just been having such a good time this last couple of weeks working together. And, uh, you know, hopefully you guys got a lot out of this video because, you know, these conversations that we have are so important to understanding what it takes to really, truly get a transfer from your training into athletic performance on the mat or on the court or on the field, whatever, whatever it is you're looking to improve upon and so i don't need to smash the like button and all that stuff again right we got that but you should though <laughs> <laughs> you know what to do smash that like button and leave a comment for us and make sure you follow mike on social media appreciate it yeah all right 